Your gateway hardware will have several connectors. This will include some facility for connecting electrical power and I'm sure you know, already know how to handle that. It's usually best to connect that one up last, so don't hook it up to power yet. One of the other cables will be labeled DSL, cable, internet, WAN, wide area network, upstream or external. That connector must be compatible with the broadband internet technology you are using and your ISP should provide a short wire to make the associated interconnection leading to the broadband modem section of your wireless residential gateway box. Hook that one up first, inserting the other end of that cable directly into the broadband wall socket. The gateway box will also have one or more connectors labeled LAN, local area network, downstream or internal. When this equipment is intended for domestic use, it generally has four such connectors, but there may be more. Those connectors are compatible with Ethernet cables, and you'll use them to connect any of your computers that are near enough for a convenient wired connection. Of course, computers that use wireless or Wi-Fi technology won't need any such wire. To get things started, you should use one of these connectors and a short Ethernet cable to connect at least one computer because the wired interface is a lot simpler than the wireless one in the beginning. Make that connection now, but leave that computer switched off. If you have more than one computer that can be conveniently hardwired with Ethernet cables, you will hook the others up later, after the basics are working. And if you need more Ethernet connectors, you can daisy chain one or more Ethernet hubs or switches, as described in other movies in the Networking Fundamentals section at AskMrWizard.com. All modern wireless residential gateways include a small, simple, internal web server, so you can communicate with them from your computer using any standard web browser. You can learn a lot more about using your web browser to communicate with your router and other network equipment from the AskMrWizard.com movie entitled Managing Your Network Equipment with Your Web Browser which is also available in our Networking Fundamentals section. But you won't be able to start that communication without some special information. Somewhere on the gateway box or prominent within the accompanying documentation, you should see some technical information that you'll need in a few minutes so that one of your computers can communicate with it. Look for the default IP address, the administrative username, and the administrative password. Usually, the default IP address will be something like 192.168.0.1 or 192.168.1.1. Usually, the administrative username will be something like admin, and the administrative password is something simple like password or admin. Make a note of this information because you're going to need it in a few minutes. If there is no user manual or booklet accompanying your equipment, you might look for a CD-ROM containing this information. Or you might need to use somebody else's internet connection to go to the website of the manufacturer to find it. Yes, some manufacturers are so incompetent that they fail to provide this essential information without major efforts on your part.